I'd invite you to take a moment and imagine the perfect Christmas. That's not part of it. Uh, imagine the perfect Christmas. What's that look like? Is it, uh, who is there? What are you doing? Are you eating with family? Are you opening presents around the tree? Are you gathered singing a, a carol at, at church? Well, whatever that cr perfect Christmas looks like, I want you to just imagine that like gold, rosy moment. Just hold on to that. Because we're going to look at the first Christmas and how, it, how that works out. Mary had her plans for the first Christmas, right? She had her expectations. She wouldn't have called it the first Christmas. She would have called it having a kid, right? So she's going to have a child and she has some plans. We don't know exactly what those plans were, but when you're going to have a child, they, they do suggest you make some plans about how you'd like that to go today. They call it a birthing plan, like write down C-section or not, those drugs, all those minor details the nurses are going to ask you. Figure that out, out ahead of time. And so you have this, this plan, and I'm sure Mary had her birthing plan as well. It's probably involved being at home, probably involved having kids, uh, or her kids and nieces and nephews all there with her, and it probably involved Joseph and just what she would have expected. She has this plan of what this perfect first Christmas will look like. And let's take a minute to observe what actually happens. She first finds out that she's going to have to travel. You ever tell a nine-month pregnant woman that you're going to have to travel? Right? That's not an easy thing to convince someone, but it's the power of the Roman Empire, so she's got to travel. She's got to go and, and uh, go to where uh, Joseph is from, and going and taking a trip while nine months pregnant, that is not in the plan. And so she's traveling, and uh, she's on her way to Bethlehem, and you know who is the slowest person in a race to get home? Everyone's got to go home for the census. Who's the slowest person to get there? The nine-month pregnant woman, right? And so they roll into town for the census. They roll in. And you ever have that moment where you're traveling and you got to stop and you don't have anywhere to stay and one spouse looks at another, it goes something like this. Well, Joseph, it's your hometown. Where are we going to stay? Well, Mary, I'm not certain. You see in something I don't? Right? I'm sure they have probably had that joyous little intermarital moment there. So yeah, they end up crashing in a stable. I'm sure Joseph at this point is muttering, this is why my family left this town. And uh, yeah, you know what this is, staying in a stable? Not in the plan. Right? And so she ends up having her child there. And uh, she has this child in the stable, not in the plan. And who are the first person, first people to come see her? Who are the first people to come see you when you've just delivered a child, right? Your mom, your dad, your, your family member, right? The first person to come see Mary, well, let me describe it this way. I want you to, uh, um, to think of the person you trust least. Think of the person that if you saw them bleeding by the side of the road, you'd be not, you wouldn't be certain if you were going to stop because you were going to think they were trying to pull something. Right? That is the person who walks into Mary's room and brings friends. Right? Shepherds are the people that are trusted least in society. If you can't get any other job, you end up as a shepherd because that way they can count. You have 100 sheep at the beginning, you have 100 sheep at the end. You're, you're doing fine. If you don't, you're fired. Right? They, there's an easy way to keep track of it because the shepherds are the least trustworthy people around. And who is it that waltz in after she's just had a kid? Shepherds, right? Not in the plan. So this is how her Christmas plan ha has gone, her first Christmas. She has traveled, she's in a stable, no family, she is surrounded by shepherds. When Olivia and I, we had plans for how we expected to have our children. We, we were pretty sure we were 0 for 2. We didn't expect it to go how it went down either way, the way it did. But Mary, whew, right, this completely goes off the rails. And so here's the question. Does Mary respond by screaming at everyone to get out of there and sobbing uncontrollably? Right? Admit it, it's tempting. Does she, number two, shut down, pretend none of it's happening, and just stare at her child and pray it's over quickly? Right? Does she, number three, in good Midwestern style, pretend it's all okay, then hold a grudge for 40 years against Joseph? Right? Or... Does she D, option four, she treasures and ponders this moment. There are a few moments I am more impressed with, than, with Mary than right at this moment where she treasures and ponders after everything has gone 
not according to plan. Right? This first Christmas, when Mary and Joseph welcomed Jesus, the Son of God, Messiah, Savior of the world, the one who offers forgiveness to all, it wasn't perfect. Right? It didn't go according to plan. If ever there was going to be a Christmas you'd have expected to go according to plan, this would be it, right? The one where the first Christmas where Jesus shows up. And so, I, remember I told you, think of that perfect Christmas. Think of that perfect, glowing, rosy moment. Your Christmas exactly how you want it to be. Right? I'm going to suggest in a, as loving way as possible, get over it. Right? Get over it. It's not going to happen. If it didn't happen for Mary, it ain't going to happen for us either. Right? It's just simply not going to happen. One day there will be a perfect Christmas where everything will go, and go according to plan. When Jesus comes in final victory, every knee shall bow and all of that. But until that time, we obsess about having this perfect Christmas and it's not going to happen. No Christmas is ever going to go according to plan. We try to make it, though. Right? We try. We try to have this perfect Christmas. I try to. I obsess about it. And for me, it's Christmas Eve. I want Christmas Eve to be perfect. The lighting, the hymns, the preaching. I want everything to be perfect. And I obsess about it. Right? I obsess about it so much that I, I, I run the risk of ruining it for myself. And that's something we do, don't we? You ever obsess about something so much, making it perfect? that you end up not being able to enjoy it, even though it's good. You know that feeling. Here is my suggestion. We learn to be like Mary and to treasure and to ponder. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what that looks like. Aren't these great? I love these. I wish I could shake the hand of the person who came up with these. I wish I could wear these all day long. I admit it would shock people and I'd enjoy that. They wouldn't see it coming. You all notice something about these yet? There is one bulb that's out. And isn't that how it always works with Christmas lights? You get those lights up, you've been up on the ladder for hours, you get down, you look up, are all the lights ever on? There's always one off. And if they're all, all are on, what do you think? As soon as I get the ladder down, what's going to happen? One light's going to go out every time. And here's your option. You can either obsess about this one right here, you can let this one ruin it, you can, or you can treasure and ponder the rest. Like Mary, right? You can take a moment to look at the rest of the lights that are on and say, whew, those are beautiful lights. And so I want to invite you to try something. When you feel yourself starting to obsess this Christmas season, and it's going to happen. Let's just be clear. At some point, right, it's going to happen. When you start feeling yourself starting to obsess about how something is not perfect, how something is not going to plan, I invite you to look away from what's not going to plan. Find the most beautiful thing in the room. Find the thing that just makes you happy. Look at it. Take a deep breath. And say thank you. And if you're in a good mood, great. If you're not in a good mood, do it again. Right? When, the, when, so, when, a, when a Jesus is born and Mary is surrounded by shepherds in the stable, nothing's gone according to plan. She looks at the child and she treasures and she ponders. Thanks be to God. Right? And so when you are looking at the table and there's that chair that's empty and so and so is not there, look at the person who is. Take a deep breath. And be glad that they are. Right? If the meat isn't done right, if the gift didn't show up, if the UPS man left the gift on the doorstep so that your kid sees it ahead of time and shouldn't have, it, no matter what happens, right? the light isn't on. The, I mean, take a deep breath, look at what's beautiful, and say, thanks be to God. And then do it again. Do it until you are training yourself to see what is good and beautiful in the room. And I want to invite you to try that right now. This, this service, it may or may not have been perfect. It wasn't. I can tell you already it didn't go according to plan. I'm not going to tell you how. You'll just have to take my word for it. Um, and I invite you to just look around right now. Find something that is beautiful. Find something that you are happy to see. Look at something you are just pleased that is in the room with you. Take a deep breath. And say thank you. Right? Do that. 
And, and what you'll be doing is practicing a way of life that is thankful for the gifts that we do have. Mary did not have a perfect Christmas. It did not go according to plan. Neither will we. That doesn't mean we're going to have a bad Christmas. What that means is, as followers of Jesus, we are called to look at what is good. And with Mary, be thankful for it. Go forth and your Christmas, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good. Go forth and be thankful for it. Amen. We confess now together when we have... Oh, let me turn this off. <laughs> My friend told me I should turn this off or some people are just going to stare at it the entire time.